do that. Um, let's keep moving on here to the Chicago Bulls saving their season um, with a 109-105 victory. Uh, as down as much as 19, I believe, in this game. Really looking like it was over. Toronto had a stranglehold on everything. And then Zach Levine happened. Zach Levine had 17 points in the third quarter, finished with 39 points, and just really just brought the Bulls back more than anything else. Um, really putting the team on his back and was really just not willing to lose. Uh, Patrick Beverly and um, Alex Caruso defended really well after their big. they were down big. But um, the Chicago Bulls have a new big three. <laughs> DeMar DeRozan, Zach Levine, and DR DeRozan. And when you look at that, <laughs> she's really the MVP of this game, right? Like, um, they're on the road in uh, in Toronto. Um, DeMar DeRozan obviously played in Toronto for 10 seasons, had basically the bulk of his career there. And now he's coming back, and his daughter begged to come to the game. <laughs> and DeMar DeRozan had a good game, had 23 points, uh, had a big couple big dunks over Siakam and Scotty Barnes in the game. He had one over Siakam in the first quarter and had a big one late in the fourth quarter against uh, Scotty Barnes off a cut in the past from Zach Levine. And DeMar DeRozan had 23 points, played well. Zach Levine was the outlier, just really putting the team on his back. But DR DeRozan, probably had the biggest impact and affected 18 free throws. The Toronto Raptors were 18 for 36 from the free throw line. And the reason why was D.R. DeRozan literally sat there and screamed. And you know how the crowd gets quiet on home uh, uh, free throws. Well, there was one willing participant to disrupt all of that. And that was D.R. DeRozan. Um, DeMar DeRozan's daughter sat there and literally screamed every free throw of the game for the Toronto Raptors and caused the impact where they shot 50%. <laughs> you can go look at the clips, look at YouTube, whatever the case may be. And she basically screamed her heart out on every Toronto Raptors free throw. She's the only Bulls fan, arguably in the crowd, because you know how Toronto just packs up at any home game. They show out anytime they're in the playoffs. She's literally the only one as a Chicago Bulls fan in the audience and goes ballistic every free throw. Just starts screaming, timely now. <laughs> we have untucked Kyrie. We have game six Clay. We have game six LeBron. We have the Kobe Scow. And now we have De DeR DeRozan scream at free throws. And DeMar DeRozan basically said, she begged him to come to the game. And he said, all right, we'll go into the game. You can skip school. To, you can miss school today. <laughs> And it paid dividends. It saved the bull season. It literally saved the bull season. They missed 18 free throws. Let's say they make, let's say they even make a couple more free throws and the, the Toronto Raptors win the game. If they make five more free throws, the Toronto Raptors win the game. And for her to be that effective on the free throw line with that, it was awesome to see. It was, it was, it was probably one of the best moments of the play, right? Like in playing basketball history, her being an annoyance to the Toronto Raptors fans the Toronto Raptors players, and then missing 18 out of 36 free throws, probably the best thing for them, right? Like, that was awesome to see, really awesome. And that's the new big three for sure um, for Chicago. And if I'm De if I'm DeMar DeRozan, keep, keep, keep bringing your daughter to these games. <laughs> it's effective. It's working. Do it. Um, well, let's keep moving on to Toronto. Toronto just lost the grips of the game, and they have Yaka Pirtle out there defending. And when the Bulls went small, that seemed to be the, the point in time where everything changed for the uh, Toronto Raptors on that end. They had everything going. Um, Pascal Siakam was playing well. OG Ananobi, um, Scotty Barnes. Yaka Pirtle was a big part of that. But when the Bulls went small, it seemed like they just didn't have enough answers for that, and the Bulls were able to get back in the game able to use their defensive side uh, with Patrick Beverly, Alex Caruso getting up in guys and really stagnating the Toronto uh, offense. And on the other side, when DeMar DeRozan had opened up everything for DeMar DeRozan and Zach Levine, they were able to get some scores and to be able to be aggressive. And when that happened, it was like, uh-oh. And then you just slowly started seeing everything go like an avalanche, like a snowball building up and just going downhill for the Toronto Raptors from that standpoint. And when you get Patrick Williams able to hit some shots there, 
You get DeMar DeRozan being aggressive. You get Nikola Vucevic, okay. But Zach Levine really brought this team back with 17 in the third quarter. But Toronto just really stagnated. Even though they were trying to hold on to the lead, had some big shots from Fred Van Fleet. He was able to get the switch on Vucevic and be able to get some shots. It was really just uncanny, and it's just like it's just been a microcosm of their season where everything starts to slow down, and they can't continue to keep their offense up, even though they're a good defensive team. For them to lose the grips on the game like that and really see at home, at home, I think that's the biggest thing here because you thought that would have been a big advantage for um, Toronto. It wasn't over the course of the game. Um but let's move on to Nick Nurse's future. There's rumors that he's already going to be leaving. He's already said, I'm contemplating um, my options. He said that a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> so you, you're looking at this guy who was basically in their G League system, has been there for 10 years, and uh, coached them to that 2019 championship. We're now four years removed from that. And you're just sitting there like, well, what's going on here? This guy, I thought this guy was bulletproof. I thought he was made there. But with everything going on, he had issues with Pascal Siakam at times, their offense being stagnant when it wasn't really like that before. And now you're looking and you're like, why is this guy leaving? He's a champion. He has a proven commodity. And now you're seeing, you're hearing people say that he might be out. He might be more on the move. People are already saying that he already has the job. He's just waiting to leave. So it's very uncertain to see a championship coach and a guy that was well-respected in that organization and around the league and considered one of the better coaches in the league to just leave this situation where Toronto, even though it hasn't been all sunshine and rainbows, you figured they would have been able to figure out a way to make it better and work that out. And to hear him possibly gone, that is interesting to hear. And it's, it's wondering because there are a couple of jobs that are open. You know, you got the Houston job that's open. You got the Detroit job that's open. People are saying Philadelphia's job might be open. Um, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what happens there with him, where he's going to go, because he's one of the better coaches in the league and he's going to be getting a good offer from some team. But it's just it's it's, it's weird to see Toronto already looking and being like this kind of uncertainty there in Toronto and, and on all fronts. Right. Um, and it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out.